Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving frequency and period of an AC supply. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that an AC supply is connected to an oscilloscope. The settings of the controls on the oscilloscope are as follows. The time-based setting is equal to 2.0 milliseconds per division, and the Y gain setting is set to 5.0 volts per division. The following trace is displayed on the oscilloscope screen. So here you can see that each box is a division and we've got two waves appearing in this pattern here. Part A says to find the peak voltage of the AC supply. So remember to find the peak voltage we need to deal with the vertical plane on the screen, i.e. the y-axis. So going back to our picture here, you can see we've got two divisions. So that means I can write that the peak voltage v-peak is equal to two divisions times the y-gain setting of five volts per division and you'll notice that we have divisions divided by divisions, so the division parts cancel out, and that gives us 10.0 volts. Part B then says to calculate the RMS voltage of the AC supply. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find VRMS. We know that V-peak is 10 volts, so we can use our relationship relating VRMS and V-peak. So that is V-peak equals root 2 VRMS. Rearranging for VRMS, we can divide both sides by root 2 to get VRMS equals V-peak over root 2. Substituting in the numbers gives 10 divided by root 2, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 7.1 volts. Part C then says to find the period of the signal. So remember to find the period or the frequency, we need to be dealing with the horizontal plane on the screen, i.e. the x-axis. So going back to the picture, for one complete wave going all the way up, all the way down and back to the start, we can see that there are four divisions or four boxes for one complete wave. So that means I can write that period T is equal to four divisions times the time-based setting of 2.0 milliseconds per division. Just like before, the divisions will cancel out here, and we end up with 4 times 2 is 8 milliseconds. However, it's going to help us when we try to find the frequency in the next part to convert this from milliseconds into seconds at this stage. So 8 milliseconds, remember, is the same as 8 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Part D then says to calculate the frequency of the supply. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find frequency. We know the period now is 8 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So writing down our equation, we have t equals 1 over f. And rearranging this for the frequency f, we can just swap the t and f. So we get f equals 1 over t. And substituting in the numbers, we get 1 over 8 times 10 to the minus 3, which, if you put into a calculator, should give you an answer of 125 hertz. Question 2 says that a signal generator producing an AC signal is connected to an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope trace and control settings are shown below. So you can see the Y gain setting is at 0.5 millivolts per division, and the time base setting is at 1.0 milliseconds per division. And you can also see we've got one, two and a half waves, so two and a half waves on the screen there. It then says for A to calculate the peak voltage of the signal. Well, remember, to find the peak voltage, we need to deal with the Y plane or the vertical plane on the screen. So you can see my amplitude is 1, 2, 3 divisions, and my Y gain setting is 0.5 millivolts per division. So I can say that V peak equals 3 divisions times 0.5 millivolts per division. Again, the divisions will cancel out, and we end up with 3 times 0.5 is 1.5 millivolts. Part B then says to calculate the frequency of the signal. Well, remember, to get the frequency, we need to calculate the period first. And to do this, we need to deal with the horizontal plane or the x-axis on the screen. So looking at the picture, we can see that one complete wave takes up four divisions. So four divisions and my time base setting is 1.0 milliseconds per division. So first we want to find the period of the signal and we do t equals four divisions times the 1.0 milliseconds per division. The divisions will cancel out and we have four times one is the same as four milliseconds and it's going to help us later to convert this into seconds. So this is the same as four times 10 to the minus three seconds. Now to calculate the frequency of the signal, we need to use the relationship between frequency and period. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the frequency. We know the period t is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And writing down our equation, we have t equals 1 over f. But remember, we need to rearrange this for the frequency f. So we get f equals 1 over t. Substituting in the numbers gives 1 over 4 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives a final answer of 250 hertz once you put it into your calculator. Lastly, question 3 says that the output from a signal generator is connected to an oscilloscope. The trace observed on the oscilloscope screen is as shown in the diagram. So we can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 waves appearing on the screen there. It then says the frequency of the signal from the signal generator is now halved. The amplitude of the signal is unchanged, and the Y gain setting on the oscilloscope is also unchanged. 
the time base setting on the oscilloscope is changed from 0.5 milliseconds per division to 1.0 milliseconds per division. It then says to describe the trace that is now observed on the oscilloscope screen. Justify your answer. So what we can gather is that two things are changing and two things are staying the same. So our frequency is halved, but our time base is doubled. So we can start by saying that initially, four complete waves appear on the screen. We saw this earlier, so this goes all the way up, all the way down and back to the start. Then you've got a second wave, a third wave and a fourth wave. So four complete waves on the screen there. However, the first change is that the frequency is halved. So when the frequency is halved, the number of waves on the screen also halves because the frequency is proportional to the number of waves on the screen. And that's just because of its definition. Remember, frequency is the number of waves passing a point each second. So if the frequency halves, we must have fewer waves appearing on the screen. So this gives two complete waves on the screen this time, which looks like this. So we've got all the way up, all the way down and back to the start for one wave, and then that repeats for a second time to give us two waves. However, when the signal looks like this, we're then told that the time base setting is doubled. So when the time base is doubled, the number of waves on the screen also doubles because the time base is proportional to the number of waves on the screen, just like the frequency is. So if we double the time base, this is going to double the number of waves on the screen. So this will give us out four complete waves on the screen like this. And this is actually what we started with. So we can conclude that therefore, the trace observed on the oscilloscope will be the same as the original. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.